This video is an edited version of an interview about this photograph. It was taken in 1991 in Tecosa Township, east of Johannesburg. Over time, this photograph has taken on new significance as editors of exhibitions and publications have chosen the image to mark a turning point in South African history. It is seen to represent the pivotal moment when power shifted from the apartheid government to the liberation movement, the African National Congress. At that stage, Mandela had only been out of prison for a few months, so as photographers we were glued to his every move. That morning he told us that he was heading off to Tokoza to speak to his supporters. We were all waiting for Mandela to arrive and we photographed him greet the crowd and move towards the podium. When one's doing, say, a news event, you feel compelled to actually stick with the main player, who in this case was Mandela. And the world was fascinated by everything Mandela did. So, you know, my brief was get good shots of Mandela. So the obvious move would have been to stay focused on Mandela. You try to capture an interesting expression or hand movement, just something that makes the photograph a little bit different. Out of the corner of my eye, I noticed that there were some kids toy toying and I registered that they were moving in the direction of a police armored vehicle. At that time it was common for police just to hang around this kind of political event just to keep an eye on things. Toy toying is a high stepping dance that's used mainly during protest gatherings or marches. You can't plan this kind of photograph. I could sort of see it happening and then I went back to photographing Mandela and then I turned around again and they were a little closer and then I decided I'm going to walk towards the situation just to see if this potential juxtaposition happens. There are so many elements that you can't control. So there's a, a, a big aspect of luck in getting an image that works in the way that this image has turned out to work. So as I was walking across the field, I changed to a different lens and I was thinking, okay, the best way to do it is to use, say, a 200 millimeter lens and I'm going to flatten the kids even further against the wall by using that lens. And then as they got closer and closer, I could really feel that something really exciting was going to happen photographically. And when they, when they were almost beneath the armored vehicle, they were lifting their knees in, in unison. And I chose that moment to, to take the shot. So, and there's so many small aspects about this photograph that in retrospect, I, I really appreciate them happening because at the time there was no ways I could make anything happen. I just had to be aware enough to do my bit in creating the photograph. The funny thing was that the kids were actually taunting the police and there's no ways that this would have happened before Mandela had been released. The kids had somehow internalized that Mandela was now the president in waiting and that he actually called the shots. I think with photojournalism, the more you do it, the more you're able to anticipate the potential of happy accidents happening. So somewhere in your mind, it sparks a possibility of an image happening. You just have to almost give the opportunity as much space as possible and then utilize the juxtapositions that develop from that situation. Even though I got some really good feedback from the photograph at that time, it took about 15 to 20 years before the photograph became symbolic of a particular moment within South Africa's transition. It's strange how a photograph can take on a life of its own. It's not like I tried to push this photograph above any other. One day I was browsing in a local newsagent and I picked up the latest Newsweek magazine. And as I was paging through the magazine, I found that this image had been used over double page spread. The article focused on the front runners for the 2008 US presidential election. And 
the magazine had asked both camps to choose an image which best represented their view on life. McCain had chosen a photograph from the Vietnam War, and Obama or his team had chosen my image without me knowing, and they had picked it up from one of the agencies that house my image. In 2018, this photograph was at the center of an art controversy. An American artist had appropriated this and other images into an art collection of his own. Numerous articles were written in newspapers and magazines and television stations devoted a large amount of time to debating the validity of this appropriation. I'm usually lucky if I get 10 or 20 responses to my social media post, but at one stage the reach on Facebook was increasing at a thousand people per hour. The geometry of this image has played an important part in its success. By placing elements of importance at certain positions within the frame, it increases our ability to immediately grasp and decipher what is going on. In this case, the geometry is really straightforward, and therefore the content is easy to decode. A horizontal line at the top of the fence splits the image into two, giving you information about the police at the top and information about the young boys at the bottom. If you then split the image along the vertical third axis and the horizontal third axis, you'll see that there's very specific information at the intersects of these lines. As an art technique, this is known as the rule of thirds. There's also a very clear demarcation of the movement within the frame. In the bottom half, the young boys are moving to the left, and at the top, these policemen are all looking out of the frame towards the right. So one's eye explores the image in both directions, even though the central part of the frame is absolutely stationary. It's really difficult to pinpoint how an image shifts from the realm of photojournalism into the symbolic, but I think a number of factors have contributed to elevating this image. The first factor is that this image has immediate impact, and that is the result of anticipation, timing, and a lot of luck. The second factor is geometry. One has to have an idea of symmetry, but the simplicity of the basic elements within this frame were way beyond my control. The symbolism is obviously a more complex factor. The primary theme of this photograph is an underdog taking on a stronger adversary. This has been the subject of folklore and mythology down the ages, and I think that's why it resonates. The most obvious example is the David and Goliath biblical story. So at best, I would say that this photograph is a calculated accident, and at the time of taking it, I was completely unaware of the life that it would have. I hope you enjoyed that video. Please like, subscribe, or leave a comment, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Is it over yet? Yes, it is good. It really is. What are they? Well... and find out what the future holds in store.